Maria was baptized, along with everyone in her household. She said, in a surge of hospitality, If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come home with me and be my guests. We hesitated, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. Please be seated. Holy Week is always an exhausting time of the year for me, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Once I get to that last hallelujah on Easter morning, all I want to do is go home and sleep for the rest of the day. But there's always an Easter dinner to attend later on. And I confess that my tiredness has made me unusually terse with my family on more than one occasion at Easter dinner. So this year, as Holy Week drew on, I determined that I was not going to attend an Easter dinner this year, and I would turn down any invitations. That Sunday afternoon nap was going to be the only thing on my agenda after surviving another Holy Week. And that resolve lasted up until about midway through lunch after the Easter service, when a couple members of this congregation asked about my dinner plans. Hearing that I had none, they invited me to join them and their family. I declined. The offer was repeated, as was the refusal. They changed tack, offering to prepare a plate and bring it to my house so that I would at least have something better than a frozen dinner for my Easter evening. One way or another, they were going to share their Easter dinner with me, and they were not taking no for an answer. They were determined that they would extend their hospitality to me, and they were willing to go well out of their way to make sure I felt welcome. So I caved. I went to Easter dinner at their house, had a great time, and managed not to snap at anybody. And having dropped my concerns and protests, the evening reminded me how enjoyable it can be to be the guest of loving hosts. <coughs> I share this story today because, to me, the readings speak of Christian hospitality in a way that's different from what we normally hear. Both in scripture and in sermons, when we hear about hospitality, we usually tend to focus on the host. We think of the familiar characters of Abraham and Lot entertaining angels unaware. We talk of Jesus' radical hospitality in inviting various outcasts and sinners to join him, and how we are called to do likewise. We talk about being guests at the Lord's table in anticipation of the feast that God hosts in heaven. But in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the protagonist is not the host, but the guest. Paul is on the continent of Europe for the first time, and this is a different world from the places he's previously traveled, culturally as well as physically. And the woman that he and his entourage meet is a very different character as well. Lydia is a traitor, which would have been a rare occupation for a woman in the Roman Empire. And not only is she a traitor, but she's a very well-off traitor. She deals in purple cloth, which was an expensive commodity, and she obviously has the means to not only maintain her own household, but to entertain a party of Christian travelers as well. We also know that she is a very determined woman. When Lydia, this newly baptized Christian, offers Christian hospitality to her brethren, Paul and his company seem to hesitate, perhaps because they don't know her well, perhaps because they're concerned about the appearance of staying with a woman, perhaps for some other reason entirely. But Lydia urges them to accept her invitation, and in the end, they do. The New Revised Standard Version, which we read this morning, says, she prevailed upon us. The New International Version translates the phrase as, she persuaded us. But I rather like the message, a contemporary translation which says, she wouldn't take no for an answer. 
I suspect that we all know somebody like that, who will not let you refuse their kindness. I can think of several in this congregation who fit that bill. And for the rest of us, their example, like Lydia's, reminds us that just as offering hospitality is a Christian virtue, so is graciously accepting that hospitality. In order for one person to host in the name of Christ, another must be a guest. Which brings me to a phrase in today's gospel that intrigues me. This reading, like last week's, is another snippet from Jesus' farewell discourse in the Gospel according to John, which is this long exchange between Jesus and the disciples after the foot washing, but before they go to Gethsemane. He tells the disciples, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Make our home with them. God will make God's home with us. At the beginning of this chapter in John, Jesus speaks of God as the host whose house has many dwelling places prepared for his disciples. But this time, he suggests the opposite, that God is the guest and we are the hosts. Jesus isn't talking about the future afterlife. He's not talking about the new Jerusalem where we will live with God after we die. He's talking about a now where God lives with us. And he tells us how to invite God to be our guest. If we love God, we will keep Jesus' word. And if we do that, God will come to us. But we, like Lydia, must be persistent. We sacramentally invite God into our lives in baptism and likewise do so every Sunday when we receive communion. But we must also invite God into our lives every day of our life by keeping Jesus' word that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so our own spirit of hospitality is directed. If we invite God, the creator of the world and savior of mankind, to be our guest, we, too, can invite earthly friends and even strangers to be our guests at home or at our table at Scooters, to be our guests at a Wednesday night cookout or at a Sunday morning service. And if God has accepted our invitation to make a home with each of us, then we, too, can accept the invitations of those who love God and keep God's word, and doing so together we can live God's kingdom on earth as a people who are truly inviting, truly welcoming, truly hospitable, and truly loving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, who came to mankind, dwelt among us, and invites us all to your table, help us, we pray, to live your hospitality in the world that we may follow the examples of Lydia and Paul as host and guest. And help us, even as we look to a future living in your heavenly home, to see a present where you live in ours. Amen. <clears throat>